Well, greetings, my scattered brothers and sisters in the Lord. Today, I'm the one that's scattered. I'm in Kansas City for a workshop for district secretaries. And the good thing is I get to stay with my daughter, Rebecca. So I'm at her kitchen table this morning and thoroughly enjoying a good cup of coffee with her. Uh, today, we move into John chapter 2, and it's a pretty familiar story, uh, the story of Jesus turning the water into wine. Uh, Jesus and his friends were invited to a wedding, and so they go, they accepted the invitation, and at some point in the wedding, they ran out of wine. Jesus' mother comes to Jesus and tells him that there's no more wine, and Jesus' response is a little peculiar. He says, woman, what's that got to do with you and me? My hour has not yet come. Sounds like he's not going to do anything about it. But his mother goes to the servants and tells them to do whatever Jesus tells them to do. Well, Jesus apparently had some type of change of mind because he tells the servants to go fill some empty stone water jars with water. And then they do that just like Mary told them to, and then Jesus has them take some of the water to the master of ceremonies, and he tastes it, and it has become wine, uh, better wine than anything he's ever had before. And at the end of the story, we get this line where the disciples saw what Jesus did, they beheld his glory, and they believed in him. Now, today we're not going to talk about the whole story. We'll talk about um, just the first couple of parts of the story, we'll, we'll address the rest of it later on during the week. Um, but the first thing is that Jesus was invited to this wedding. A good friend of mine, Pastor Mark Lehman, has pointed out that that may be one of the most important points in the story, that Jesus was invited. Uh, how often do we go through a day and we never invite Jesus into all the parts of the day? How often do we have events and we don't bother to specifically invite Jesus into those events, let alone invite him to be Lord over those events? And so maybe the first thing we need to recognize in terms of this first miracle that Jesus does is part of it happening was that Jesus was invited and how important it is for us to invite Jesus into every aspect of our lives. I think sometimes we can compartmentalize to where we invite Jesus into our life, but then we don't invite him to everything that we're involved in, uh, all the different events that we attend to. And so to invite Jesus, and even more than invite him just to be there, invite him to be Lord. I think a, a second thing that catches my attention is that we have this line, uh, there was no more wine. And it's really kind of a tragic line. It's really a line that just kind of settles in. Um, there was no more wine. Uh, wine was a symbol of joy. It was a symbol of life. And so in some sense, this is more than just an inconvenience. This is an inadequacy. And it reminds me of the beatitude, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, there was no more wine. There was no more power. There was no more joy. Uh, just kind of having to deal with their own bankruptcy. That's exactly where we need to be sure that we've invited Jesus. Uh, third thing, and the response of Jesus' mother Mary. Uh, she tells the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. That sounds to me a whole lot like the church, because that's our message. Do whatever Jesus tells you to do. Um, she knew that Jesus was going to respond to the need. She knew that Jesus was going to respond to this emptiness, to this bankruptcy. And so she tells those servants, do whatever he tells you to do. And I think that's a really strong word for each of us, that whatever Jesus is telling us to do, uh, we need to be sure that we do it. I'm sure those servants didn't understand, but yet they obeyed. They did what Jesus told them. And oftentimes we don't understand, but we need to do what he tells us to do. So just words for the day. Be sure that Jesus is invited into every aspect of your day. Invite him to be Lord over your day and don't keep anything from him. Uh, confess 
your own inadequacy, your own emptiness, your own bankruptcy. Uh, there's no more wine. And then whatever Jesus tells you to do, be sure to do it with all your might, whether it makes any sense or not, uh, because he's at work bringing life, bringing joy. God bless. Have a great day. And whatever he tells you to do, do it.